for I hear the Lord say, surely I've heard your cry. Surely I've heard your prayers, the Lord says. And the very thing your heart longs for, the Lord says, I shall surely do. For the Lord said, I have chosen to come and for you to be my children and me to be your God. And the Lord says, surely I am coming and I will dwell in your midst, says the Spirit of God. And in the days ahead, you will see revival and you shall see so much more than revival, says the Lord. You shall see more. You shall see more. There will be an abundance of the things that your heart has longed for, the Lord says. For surely you will see things that even the angels and the, the cloud of witnesses have longed for and have prayed for all these years. And the Lord says, your voice is joining with their voice. The Lord says, for a convergence at this time, the Lord says, and surely I come, says the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for some people before we give prophetic words even. I, uh, I want to pray for <clears throat> Keith and Deanna, who are, we have two sets of kind of honeymooners. Keith and Deanna are in, uh, in the, uh, Puerto Rico right now. We'll just pray for them, Father, right now that the power of God would come upon them and that you show that the union that God has put together is that of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in advance for what you're doing. For even now, they feel the presence of God and the, and the glory of God who has joined the two of them together in, in a special union and communion in God. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. And also, uh, a kind of a honeymoon for Krista and um, Shane, and they'll be spending it in uh, Bahamas. So, Father, we just thank you right there. Do we have anybody else going on <laughs> anywhere? But, Father, we just thank you that right there in the Bahamas that the presence of God would be made known to them, that it's not, it's not just a time away. It's a time of closeness, both with God and with one another, that they that are joined to the Lord are one spirit with him, and may they sense his presence very richly during this time and during this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I want Scott to remain standing. Scott, I just hear the Lord saying that God says that I've taken you on a path that was not the ordinary trodden path, but God says I've got you in the exact place at the exact time for you to make quality decisions because there's a series of alignments that are coming into your life. To the degree that you cooperate with the obedience uh, to my spirit and not just the rational mind, God says that I'm gonna cause you to prosper in the days ahead like never before. And I see finances uh, being uh, significantly uh, the area that will be uh, dealt with in Jesus' name in a wonderful way. And I hear the Lord say to you that there are going to be some changes. Stand up a minute. That there are going to be some changes that the Lord is bringing into your life. And that the Lord says there are good changes and there's be some unexpected changes. The Lord says, I've got some surprises in store for you. And the Lord says, in a sense, it's going to alter the very course of your life. And the Lord says, you will recognize these changes as opportunities that I have brought your way. And you will recognize these as doors that I have opened before you. And the Lord says, and my spirit will be upon you. And you will go through these doors. And it will bring you great joy and fulfillment, says God. It will bring you great joy and fulfillment in a way that you have not known before. And the Lord says, the days of rejoicing have come. The days of rejoicing, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, I, didn't, I purposely let Jennifer prophesy because I had a little inside information when Nancy came in. Nancy, come on up and tell us about, tell us about what he's doing. Is my microphone on yet? Because I'll start using the, okay. You're, you're on. Come on up with her. Come on. Because um, I heard. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Um, this is uh, Dr. David Joy. Um, he is a physician in Myanmar, but he's also a, um, a, a revolutionary prophetic uh, evangelist. Yeah. <laughs> he. Um, but he took some training with one of your pastors, right? We had some training. Yeah. And so. <clears throat> He's raising up young people. He goes and he fathers the fatherless. He has um, an incredible ministry there. So he's been doing a lot of training and a lot of young people. He carries a lot of authority. And your, your ministry has made a really big difference in Myanmar. And he's, I don't even know how else to say it. You want, can you? 
Yeah. And, uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, uh, there is a particular region in my country uh, called Golden Hello. Triangle. It is in the eastern part of my country. Uh, it was used to be the first leading opium and heroin trade in the war. Now it's second after the Afghanistan. So there are a lot of brokenness and broken families. All, almost all the families are broken. And, so the 90% of the male teenager became a drug abuser, more than 90%. So uh, I, I was do, I'm doing in the uh, mission work in, in that area, and, and I'm planning to move there this year. And uh, she talked about changes. And when I minister, I opened the, the one-man school called the School of Restoration. I teach uh, some particular lesson, and one of the lessons is forgiveness. So I reteach what you talk, what you teaching, uh, drop down and forgive, and it is one of the greatest, uh, most fruitful teaching, because uh, these teenagers, some belong to gang groups, and they uh, they've been fighting. They became victims of drug and sex and violence, and but they uh, they are able to forgive. And can I say one particular testimony? A woman in her forties. And she has uh, four sons, and the elder is around 20 years old. When she was very little, like seven or eight years old, her father sent her and her elder sister to her aunt's home for education in a town. Uh, because uh, in the villages, there is no education. So she had to stay in her uh, aunt's house, and her aunt forced these two sisters to sell the heroin. So the elder one uh, weighed the heroin in gram, and she had to ride a big bicycle to distribute to particular addresses because her uh, aunts wanted to escape when there is an arrest for the heroin selling, heroin dealing. So uh, she, she had a lot of bitterness and anger toward her aunts and her father too. She left her father, her father left her, but her father died uh, in the village before she uh, she got to see her, uh, him again. So she had a lot of uh, trauma in her life and there, there is civil war in my country. She lived in the war zone, so uh, she cannot sleep without blanket on. Even there is a hot weather till, uh, till in uh, adulthood. So she, uh, last time when I went there in July, last year July, I taught on forgiveness and this year when I went there again and she told the testimony this testimony she even didn't tell her husband yet uh, about uh, her life in selling the heroin she the first time she opened up about her life in selling the heroin when she was a child and she was uh, she is very worried for her four sons because uh, she did bad things in a, uh, a childhood and so uh, she said uh, after learning to drop down and forgive, release the forgiving grace of Christ, she was able to forgive her aunts. So the first time in her life, she called again her aunts on foe, and but her, uh, she heard that her aunts died by, a, by an accident. A truck runs over her aunts. Uh, so, but anyway, she, she is able to forgive, and that's, uh, there are a lot of testimony of forgiveness in, in that particular region, blessing my country, and I want to say thank you. You are blessing uh, the most devastating and extreme suffering region of the world through your teaching of forgiveness. And I want to say thank you. Let's pray an impartation. Yeah. I just want to release an impartation of discerning of spirits Whoa. that they'll be even more sensitive to the hurts Whoa. and the wounds of other people Whoa. in Jesus' name. That impartation is going to multiply a thousandfold. You're going to see that which God began in you even now. There's a spirit resting upon you that is going to embrace you and hold you and carry you. And it's going to be like you're swimming in the anointing of God. It's no longer going to be an effort. And it's going to be effortless. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, God says, you haven't seen anything yet because I'm about to multiply it. And even the forgiveness message is merely the basic foundation for God says, I'm going to take you into a level of, of where you're going to see deliverance, the renewing of the mind, and you're going to be, you're going to be able to amplify everything that God's put in you. But primarily, we release a oneness anointing 
for him right now and discerning of spirits discerning the human spirit primarily so that you know who's hurting regardless of the outward expression to know who's hurting regardless of, of uh, the smile on their face and their body language because they can fool uh, they can fool you with their outward language they can fool you with their body language but they can't hide what's emanating and that pain is going to be picked up by you instantly and you're not going to own it but you're going to bear witness to it and then the God of peace himself is going to crush the enemy beneath your feet and you're going to see multitudes changed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Get on the online school and take some of the other stuff. Because the forgiveness, when Jennifer saw it for the first time, when we met, she said, this is huge, but she only saw that part. That's only the beginning of what can be done in changing people's lives. Amen. Amen. And also, there, if there's a truth that you can see from this situation that we have a difficult time here in the States con convincing Christians, there's no big or little on God's side. Big problems and little problems, that's a product of your own imagination. Really. They've showed unsaved children who rose above impossible situations Simply have, you have the capacity in your mind to make a mountain out of a molehill or a molehill out of a mountain. I say choose making the mountains in your life a molehill. Jesus said, is it easier for me to forgive your sins or take up your bed and walk? See, we think one's easier than the other. On God's side, when God is doing it through the new creation you. Now you all know this, people watching by Ustream might need to refresh themselves. How many have struggled with a simple forgiveness? And that really is the kindergarten stage. I want so much more for him than that. I want you to move into supernatural deliverance, but know that the door is closed after they get deliverance so that they're, they stay in the, in the presence of God. I think we need to dismiss the children or did they already go? They're already gone? Okay. Bless those little children. By the way, you know, they're the church. They're not the future church. They are the church. They have the same Holy Spirit you have as an adult. So they are the church of today.